Hello everyone, I'm Julia Stashkina. I manage partner marketing at Near4j and I'm thrilled to have Charlie Beveridge with us today. She is um, a senior consulting manager at Accenture. Hi, Charlie. Hey, Julia. Charlie, could you tell us a little bit more about what you do at Accenture? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Julia. So my name is Charlie Beveridge. Um, I'm a senior consulting manager at Accenture and I lead our AI propositions for clients in the telco and media industries. So I work with client teams in both the front and back office spaces to help them take advantage of the things new technologies are enabling them to do. And knowledge graphs are one of those technologies I'm seeing have the greatest impact for our clients. Hmm. So what is a knowledge graph? So normally a graph means a couple of X and Y axes, which measure certain things like volume or time. But the sort of graph we're talking about here is 3D and it's 3D axes don't even necessarily measure anything. They're just a way to give dimensions to or draw out the space we're about to fill. And if you can imagine a number of points or dots representing, for example, LinkedIn profiles, and they're laid out anywhere within that 3D space. And each point or profile has lines coming from it that connect it to one or more other points or profiles, which in turn have their own lines connecting to other profiles and so on. And really the only things that are important are what each of those points on the graph represents, which other points they're connected to, and then how close or far apart those connections are. That's a knowledge graph. And social or professional networks like LinkedIn are a pretty obvious network example. But basically, everything in your life is part of a network. You take a network of roads when you drive. Your household products went through a network of supply logistics to get there. Even our own knowledge is a network of concepts that we've built up over time. And once you've set up any network on a graph, there are so many more things you can do with that data. And AI in particular can have a much, much greater impact when it's using data organized into graph format. Yeah, sure. So what excites you most about graphs? Well, in a single sentence, graphs are doing for AI what electricity did for the world. And that might be really strong, but they're opening up entirely new use cases for AI and they're radically shifting what's possible. There's a major difference between big data and knowledge. You can have a ton of data points in a big data sea of information, like all the people who visited a theme park this year, which you could aggregate up into things like age or gender to know how many of your visitors were say male 30 somethings. But it's another level entirely if you can have connected data points, which provide real insight because they pull together the relevant context, like knowing who came together to that theme park or who came after their friend who recently visited recommended they should go or who expanded to another, another person in the group the second time they came. Connections between data points can give you the context behind the data, like knowing who is actively increasing your visitor base by bringing their friends along because they just love your theme park so much. And drawing connections is the essence of what a graph is doing to the data points you give it. It's creating connecting relationships so that everything hangs together into meaningful context or a storyline. And data that means something is data you can do something much more useful with and the exciting part is that graph means that ai can use data that is all already connected together with all of its context and meaningful storylines and this means it can make much more useful decisions for example ai can learn to target you with the best kinds of offers to reward you for advocating that theme park to your friends which is a much better strategy than the theme park just blanket targeting you with comms they believe are right for your age and gender. Right. Very interesting. Um, do you have any more examples of why it is important to use the whole context for AI? Absolutely. There are so many. Um, let me think of a couple. Imagine an AI which is reading what you type and responding to you. 
maybe a customer service chatbot on your bank's website. The English language has evolved to use the same words and even the same phrases to mean entirely different things. And when we speak, we can clarify the meaning we intend through the use of tone or gesture. But, but when we type, there are far fewer clues for the recipient to use to decipher meaning. It's like when you read a WhatsApp for a second time and you realise it meant something entirely different to how you originally read it. Where on both reads, your brain is using all of the context available to it at the time in order to determine what to understand from the text. It's linking words and sentences and previous words and sentences in the thread, as well as knowledge of who the sender is and even things like time of day. And it's getting to a conclusion on what the latest text means. Now, for your bank's chatbot, if it's built only to read your question at face value and provide an answer, then it's likely going to miss the whole context and therefore misinterpret the question, which wouldn't make it very helpful. But if a graph can tie together all of the clues, like time of day and links between words and sentences and information about the sender and so on, then the chatbot has a much more brain-like way of understanding what you're asking and then responding appropriately. Or another good example is getting to the root cause of an issue. So Toyota actually created the five whys mantra as part of its manufacturing methodology, where asking why five times, focus them on fixing the cause and not just putting a temporary plaster over any symptoms. You know, why is the car not starting? The battery's dead. Why is the battery dead? The alternator isn't working. Why? Its belt is broken. Why? The belt is end of life, but it wasn't replaced. Why wasn't it replaced? The car wasn't serviced when it was supposed to be. OK, so we don't need to investigate a line of cars with full three battery then. If you've got a relatively new car, then it's probably got some kind of onboard diagnostic system, which is constantly monitoring how the car is performing and whether any part of it is broken. And the newer the car, the more likely it's using AI in those diagnostics. But without the ability for the computer to link together symptoms and chains of connected parts and the root cause or root causes plural because there can be more than one it's never going to be able to accurately present to you what really needs fixing so there's no point in investigating a line of car batteries when in reality it was just this one customer that didn't service the car properly so in this sense graph would enable ai to ask the five whys and that example focused on car faults but Really, this deep analysis technique is important for any chain of events that leads to a fault in anything. You could have burst pipes in an energy network or a mast issue in a telco network or even faulty machines in a supply chain network. Graph is helping AI determine the real root cause. Well, fascinating. Um, sounds very, very useful. And what does this mean for AI in the future? The thing with AI is that so far we've not seen it do much, if any, of the scary stuff we see it do in films. We don't have friends who are robots, at least not yet. And that's because the narrow forms of AI we've developed are using specific data sets, often big data data sets, to complete specific tasks, albeit learning over time how to do those tasks better. And AI is really great at what it does, but what it does has been limited by the lack of context in the data that fuels it. And the thing that we have as humans is the innate ability to draw all the connections we need to interpret, to understand, to learn new things, and even to invent things like using one language to learn another, or like learning about history through watching theatre productions, or even like doing things like studying bird wing shapes as the Wright brothers did to invent aircraft flights. And this ability to draw connections and comparisons make our brains the most powerful on earth. And that sort of creativity has been key to our survival and evolution as a species. So we talked about how graph is the glue that connects data in a way that creates meaning out of it. And we've seen how that connected context in turn 
enables AI to achieve much more powerful outcomes for us. Like identifying root causes, um, like targeting relevant rewards or answering your questions more effectively. And the ability to make connections like humans do naturally is going to really continue to change the game in terms of what AI is able to achieve. And I almost hate to say it, but it's starting to mean AI can be creative. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Um, this has been very insightful. Um, thank you, Charlie. And to our audience, uh, you're welcome to check out the links at the end of this presentation uh, for more information. And I'd like to thank our speaker, Charlie, for talking to us today.